The items I'm going to talk about here were essential to the economy of ancient Egypt and are extremely common on excavation sites until around 6 or 700 BC. They are flint sickle blades, and hundreds of these have been excavated from the royal site of Amarna. In fact, almost every museum which has Amarna material has sickle blades. These are the examples from the Egypt Centre. They are around 10 centimetres in length, and these particular ones were excavated by the Egypt Exploration Society. So how do we know they are sickle blades? Well, we can be pretty certain because they are shown in art, such as this scene from the tomb of Senegem, a little bit later than the Amarna examples, but not by much. If we look closely at the sickle here, we can see that it is individual teeth. And this fine example from the British Museum shows a wonderful sickle with the blade still attached. It even has the owner's name in gold leaf, so it is unlikely to have been used for everyday purposes. It's from Thebes, and roughly the same date as the Amarna sickles. I really wish we had this in the Egypt Centre. We might imagine that ours would look a bit like this when hafted. I probably made the blades a bit too big for the haft, but you get the idea, I hope. Note that the blade at the end of the sickle is pointed, sort of triangular shaped, while the rest are straight, specially shaped to fit the haft. You will see that as well as the flint itself, there is some grey cement, which was used to hold the flint in its haft. One of the intriguing things about the Amarna sickle blades is that they were found on the west bank, while the fertile land is on the east. I can think of three possible reasons why that might have been the case. Firstly, perhaps, the sickles were gathered up once they had lost a tooth and brought back to Amarna on the west bank to be fixed. Secondly, maybe these sickles weren't used in harvesting of wheat, but rather some other plant material on the west bank. Maybe rushes, which were used for houses, for example. Thirdly, maybe these loose teeth were gathered up to be recycled on the west bank for some other function, the processing of flax, maybe. Now, although these are commonly called sickle blades, they might not have been made on a long, thin piece of flint, which archaeologists call blades, but rather might have been cut down from a broader, flatter piece, which archaeologists call flakes. Sometimes you can tell from looking closely at the ripples and other features formed by the manufacturing process as to whether examples were produced on flakes rather than blades and it certainly appears from looking closely at these that several of the Amarna period blades were actually made on flakes. A quite remarkable man associated with Amarna, and someone whom the Egyptologist Flinders Petrie called his best friend, studied the flint from Amarna. I say remarkable because his methods were only commonly used in later times. This man, Flaxman Spurrell, was studying ancient Egyptian flints during the 1890s. In 1894, Spurrell described parts of pebbles from Amarna which had been naturally split by the action of weather and which had been gathered together for use at the south end of the city. He also states a similar use of material of the same date at Gurob. Some of these pieces appeared to Spurrell to have been used to manufacture flint sickle blades. But why did the Egyptians make sickles from flints? They did have the use of copper alloys by this date, though iron was very much an elite-only material. Experiments have shown that flint sickles are better than copper and just as good as bronze. And flint would have been much easier to obtain in Egypt than copper. It was only when iron was in common use, so from around 700 BC, that flint had a functional competitor. Interestingly, iron seems to have been commonly used in Egypt from around the same time as it was commonly used in Wales. Flint also had for the Egyptians the added value of religious significance, being associated with fire, snakes and Ra, and a perfect material with which to defeat enemies. One might wonder, in fact, why metals were ever used. But that is a tale for another day. If you want to know more about flint sickle blades at Amarna, follow the link at the end of this video.
or below.